What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with another video. In today's video, we'll be performing the initial startup of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. Now this allows you to experience the device for the very first time with me if you're interested in it. Now in the previous video, we performed the unboxing. Now this video is featured on the Samsung playlist so you can find information related to this topic quickly and easily. Today's video was filmed on the Google Pixel 5 and edited on the Google Pixel Book Go using the Power Director app from the Google Play Store. This allows us to put all the devices we review through real world usage so you can see real world results. As always, we only feature products or services I buy, use, or am interested in. Now you can find the Galaxy Z Fold 3 and related accessories at the Amazon storefront link in the description below. Don't have time to watch the whole video? We're now a podcast you can find on multiple platforms by searching for Pixels Cracked. And if you are listening to this on a podcast, you can find the more detailed video and YouTube channel by searching for Pixels Cracked as well. All things said, let's go ahead and get into it. So here we are with the initial startup of the Z Fold 3. And we've got the power button here on the right side. So I'm going to press and hold on that. And then this should turn on in a moment. There we go. I'm going to try to adjust the brightness here on the camera so we get a better view. There we go. We're going to lock in. And if you're looking at this, you might be wondering why the phone might look a little tilted. That's actually because of the camera module in the back there. It actually sticks out pretty good. And that kind of makes it look like my screen is not straight. So here we are at the welcome screen, and this looks pretty similar to other Android devices, similar to the Google Pixel 5a 5G I'm in the process of reviewing as well. We have our first option, which is to choose our language, and then we have start, and we can perform an emergency call here. And then we've got accessibility. Now, again, this is the Z Fold 3. So I'm wondering if I fold this close, if I can perform this process on the outside of the screen. So we're going to fold here just to see what happens. That's closed. And it looks like we have nothing yet. I'm going to see if maybe the power button helps. The power button does help. So it looks like we can also perform this process on, on that smaller outside display, or they call it the cover display. But again, this is a Z Fold 3. We want to do this um, in the coolest way possible. I will say opening the phone, I still have to get used to that. It's, it's a little bit uh, tough. It's got some resistance. But that's a good thing because I don't want this thing to just be flopping open, right? I want it to stay closed when I want it to stay closed. So we're going to tap start here. And then we've got a few legal items to review. Why not? Just jump right into it. And it looks like you have to check these options off. So this is a little bit different than the Pixel 5a 5G. Um, so you have to tap terms and conditions, privacy policy, send diagnostic data. That's optional, but I always send it because I like to help out. And then of course, we're going to say that we read all of this in under 10 seconds and we're going to tap next. So next we would choose our Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to do this off camera for privacy reasons, of course, and then we'll continue on. So I just connected to my Wi-Fi network and you weren't able to see it, but this keyboard on this main display, it actually splits in half. So you have half of the keyboard here and half of the keyboard here, and then a gap in the middle. And I can tell you that's going to take some time to get used to, but it makes sense because again, this device folds. And this was just checking for an update, and now it's getting our phone ready. And while this is getting ready, I gotta say I like this display. It looks really nice. And uh, the folding technology, again, very, very amazing. You can see when we fold this here, it actually stays in position. It's got some good resistance to it. It's nice and smooth. Again, the display pretty much feels like any other phone, except when you get to the middle, you can feel that crease. You can feel it pretty good there and it runs down the middle. It's not a huge problem for me because again, this is a folding device. It's a folding display. What can you really expect? Now here we are at the next screen and it's asking if we want to copy apps and data. Now I like to start fresh, brand new. It's like a digital cleanse. So I'm going to tap on don't copy. 
But if you did want to copy your apps and data, you could do that via cable. So next we're going to sign into our Google account. Again, I'm going to exclude this for privacy reasons as well. But before I exclude this, I did want to show the keyboard. So this is what I was talking about. You've got a left portion of a keyboard and then you've got the right portion. And then you got that empty space in the middle. And these keys, they're, they're kind of small. I've got regular size fingers, but I imagine if someone has thicker fingers, this is going to be a bit challenging for them to tap on without accidentally tapping other letters. It's also going to require a bit of coordination, I imagine. So there's going to be a learning curve here. So once we sign into our Google account, we'll have to read and agree to the Google services. And then the phone will check for more information. And then we'll come to this screen here where we can select an option to protect our phone. Now options include face recognition, fingerprints, pattern, pin, or password. Now I like using fingerprints, so I'm gonna go with that. And this is a quick and easy way to unlock the phone. We've got the capacitive button here on the side, which also has the fingerprint sensor built into it. And uh, it just lets us know that our fingerprint data is secured by Knox. Now I don't know much about that. I'd have to look into that, but that's interesting. So we're going to tap continue. And then this brings us to this next screen and it lets us know before we can register our fingerprints, we need to create a secure screen lock. And for me, I'm gonna go with pen. So again, we're going to exclude this from the video for security reasons. So now that we've created our pen, we can go ahead and do our fingerprint. So we're going to put our fingerprint on the sensor and then lift it off. And then we're going to put it back on there, lift it off. This is very similar to the Google Pixel. So I'm going to just keep doing this in different ways here. And variation I'm sure helps. You want to be off a little bit on different points of the finger, different angles, that kind of thing. And you can feel a slight vibration as you do this. Now I will say this requires you to do it a lot more than the Google Pixel. I think the Google Pixel, you do this for each finger about three or four times, maybe five. Now, once you've added a fingerprint, you can go ahead and add another. And I actually did this with the pointer on my other hand in case I have to use this hand because the other hand is busy holding something. Now, I didn't show this only because I was reaching across the screen and blocking most of the view but you can also add more than two fingerprints. So now that all our fingerprints are added, we could tap next. Now this is just getting our phone ready. Again, this looks pretty similar to the Google Pixel 5a 5G. Now we can do a Samsung account as well. Obviously this is going to be specific to Samsung. So I'm just going to continue with Google. Now I'm glad to see they've included this next page. It's titled Taking Care of Your Phone. And this is self-explanatory, but we're going to run through everything here. So the first note here is pressing the screen or the front camera lens with a hard or sharp object such as a pen or fingernail may cause damage such as scratches or dents. That's pretty self-explanatory. Use only a Samsung S Pen Pro or S Pen Fold Edition. Other S Pens or stylus may damage the main screen. Uh, so that's interesting. When you fold the phone, make sure there's nothing inside such as a card, keys, coins, or an S Pen. Makes sense. This phone isn't dust resistant. Exposure to small particles such as sand may cause damage. From what I've heard, these things can get underneath the screen as well. This phone is water resistant. Again, IPX8. Immersion in any liquid other than fresh water such as salt water or alcohol can damage your phone. Don't remove the protective film on the main screen or apply unapproved films or stickers as doing so can damage your screen. That's also a big one I've seen people applying screen protectors already. Now I did apply a screen protector to the cover display, but not to the main display. That The main display is this one here. It's the one you want to be most careful about. And apparently applying a screen protector here could damage your display. So I skipped out on that. But if you are thinking of doing that, you're doing it at your own risk. And then the last one here, your phone contains magnets. Keep it away from credit cards, implantable medical devices, and other devices that may be affected by magnets. 
So we're going to tap next. And then this is we're all set up. Now, because this is a tutorial, we're going to tap on Explore Your Galaxy Z. So this gives us tips here. The first tip, view more on the main screen. If you're using an app on the cover screen, that's a smaller one. Open your phone to get a larger view without leaving the app. We're gonna to swipe to the left here. Keep going when you close your phone. You can set up your phone so that the app you're using on the main screen will keep running on the cover screen when you close your phone. That I like. So these might answer some of your questions as well. This next one is also really good. Link your home screens. Keep home screen organization simple by mirroring your cover screen layout on the main screen. Changes you make in one place are reflected in the other. So what this is saying is that you can set this up so the cover display is the same as the main display. That's a plus. The next one here, choose your view. Use multi-view to do more at once or go with standard view to make content larger. I'm hoping that I can swap in between both easily because there are times where I do want to use multi-view or multitask as I'm familiar with it. But I imagine standard view is going to be great for things like media consumption. The next screen here is do more in multi-view. Tap an item on the left to view details on the right side of the screen. For apps with a navigation rail, tap the button at the top to see all the options. So this looks very fascinating. It's going to take a little time, but it looks great. Flex your phone, change your view, fold your phone to different configurations and watch the screen layout change. This is what makes this device futuristic. Flex your phone to review your shots. Fold your phone upright in the camera app to immediately review the pictures and videos you take. So there's gonna be, there's gonna be quite a learning curve here. Preview pictures on the cover screen. Use rear cam selfie to line up selfies on the cover screen, then shoot them with the powerful rear camera. You can also turn on cover screen preview to show the preview on both the covers and main screens in other modes. So there's a lot to take in with this phone. Make the most of flex mode. I don't know why, but I love that terminology, flex mode. It just sounds, it sounds futuristic. It sounds Iron Man like. When your phone is folded upright, show app content on top and get extra controls at the bottom of the screen. I'm sure everyone's seen this one a lot. I'm looking forward to using this. I think it's going to be fascinating. I'm hoping that it also works with some games. Open apps in split view with Apps Edge. You can open an app in split screen view by dragging it from the Apps Edge. I love that idea. That just looks really nice. Again, very futuristic too. You've got a sidebar that pulls out from the right. Pin your favorite app. So turn the app's edge panel into a taskbar by pinning it to the screen so your favorite apps are always within reach. Taskbars are always cool, love that. Save your current split screen layout. When you're running apps in split screen view, you can save the layout as an app pair. Open the app's edge panel and tap to reopen the app pair later. This is this phone is essentially designed around productivity. It's a productivity beast. Open links, files, and text in new windows. Drag a link, file, or copy text to open it in a new window. Drag to the edge of the screen to open in split view or drop it in the center to open in a pop-up window. Reposition your apps in multi-window view. You can move windows around, touch and hold, then drag the handle to switch places with another window. You can also touch and hold the handle of an app in pop-up view to drag it into multi-window view. So getting this far already, there I'm not going to remember all this. I'm going to have to come back to this. As you can tell, there is a lot going on here. Share screenshots easily. After taking a screenshot in split screen view, you can drag the screenshot thumbnail into an open app to share it. Very simple, like that. Discover experimental features and settings labs. I probably will try that eventually, but I gotta get the basics down. But information about this here, try out experimental features and labs before they're officially launched. So these might not be stable. Uh, use all apps in multi-window, rotate apps to any orientation, change app aspect ratios, and more. Write anywhere you can. Use your S Pen to write in search fields, address bars, and other text areas. Make a mistake? You can scribble out or add words and letters even after your writing is converted to text. 
Show bookmark bar. You can show a bookmark bar below the address bar for quick access to your favorite websites. Now I haven't used a Samsung phone in quite some time, but I'm imagining you have to use a Samsung browser to do this. I, I'm not sure that it's going to work with any other browser, but I'm going to look more into that. Protect your privacy on the web. Browse safely with enhanced privacy and setting features in Samsung internet. So this goes back to the previous screen as well. Again, Samsung Internet, I'm thinking that's their browser. That's what we're going to have to use. And we're all set up, so I'm going to tap Finish. So here we are at the main display, and this looks really nice, really futuristic. I'm going to start by swiping down here twice because I want to show you the display adjustment. So the display is full brightness right now. And I'm going to tap and pull on the slider, that's 50%. And then I'm going to tap and pull on it again. That's almost to the lowest set in there. Now I'm going to bring this back up to full brightness, swipe up here. And then we're going to swipe to the right. We've got the Google feed here, and I'm going to focus the camera a little bit. And this carries over from Google Pixel as well. This is nice to see. Now this is a perfect example of why you want a Z Fold 3. And it's because of media consumption. So everything in the Google feed is really large. It's easy to see. This isn't only great, you know, just because it looks awesome, but if you're someone who it's hard to see things, everything's bigger here. This is, this is the phone for people who just want to see things bigger or who need to see things bigger. This looks really nice. So here we are with three buttons at the bottom of the screen. This one is the recent apps. This one looks like it's the home button. And this looks like it's the back button. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory as well. We'll open up the Google Play Store really quick. This looks really nice. Again, large screen. Everything's bigger. And I just want to fold the phone here really quick so we can get an idea of how all of this transfers to the outside. So you can see that that cover display, it's dark still. I have to tap the power button and then I have to use my finger to unlock it. There we go. Everything is smaller there, obviously. I'm going to try and focus the camera here. That's the best I can get. We'll try one more time. So that's the best I can get with the camera. This looks really nice though as well. Again, everything's just going to be smaller, but if we swipe here, we can see the Google feed. This device is really nice. I'm going to just open this one more time here. And again, this is the part that takes some time to get used to is opening this. And you can see that it actually flipped here. I'm going to lift it up there, flip it back. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the initial startup today. So that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please leave a like. If you're watching this on YouTube and have any questions or comments, as always, drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, there are three ways you can support the channel and podcast. The first way is to click on the Amazon storefront link found in the description below. There you'll find items that I have bought or would like to buy and anything you buy from the storefront does support the content. The next way you can support us is just by sharing this content with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way you can show your support is just by clicking the subscribe or follow button button. Now liking and subscribing are important. Those are ways to vote on whether you like the video or the podcast. Liking and subscribing are also important for new viewers and listeners. If new viewers and listeners see likes and subscribers, they're going to think that the content is helpful, worth watching, and listening to. So that is pretty much it. And until next time, Leon checking out. Yeah.